Arising was a well-known local artist and a good friend of Joe Nola. We asked Elmer's daughter, Linda Rising Buttonhagen, to give us her recollections of her father's work. When Joe opened the shop, he offered my father an exhibit. Um, so he put together this exhibit that you see here today, and it never moved. It was here the whole time this shop has been here, and it became known as Elmer's Place. Dad grew up in Rockland, Maine, and came here to go to Practical School of Art in Boston, and worked at Harvard for 42 years as a technical illustrator. And most of these works were done in his retirement, which he's a wonderful role model to a lot of people of what you can do after you work for 42 years. Um, he never had the time to put into them when he was working. So once he retired, and after my mother had died, he said in the book, he mentioned that he married his pen. Joe's shop really came a place where he could come down with whatever he'd been working on for two or three hours or six hours, and people would be here, and Joe would be here, and he could critique it, and other people would talk about it, and he'd put it up on the wall and look at it for a while. So it was a gathering place. And it was a place, I think, for him to do some work and then have a break and go back to it later in the day. One of Elmer's most famous pieces was the one called Ray and Donald. Uh, Ray Phillips was sort of the hermit of Manana Island, which is across the bay from Monhegan Island. And his constant companion was this goose, which he named Donald. And Elmer did go over and visit with Ray and ended up doing a portrait of him uh, with the goose, with Donald. And when he got it done, he took it back over to show, show it to Ray Phillips on Monhegan Island. Andrew Wyeth saw the original work and wanted to purchase it. Elmer refused to sell it to him because of the restriction that Wyeth put on it, that. Uh, there couldn't be any prints made. And the people were saying, you know, you're crazy turning this man down. He's nationally known. But Elmer was stubborn. He said, no. He says, I'll know what will happen. He'll put it in his private collection and nobody will see my work. So he, he would not sell it to, to Wyeth based on uh, those conditions. Turns out that Jamie Wyeth bought one of the prints. Other artists used to gather here as well, um, Jerus Montez and Natalie Nordstrom. And a lot of different people would come in with their things that they were working on, or they'd just come in for a cup of coffee and, and talk with each other and share about different shows that were coming up and the activities of the local art associations. There are different types of, of drawings that he did. The, this would be a pen and ink. And in it, he would also use a little bit of wash. Now, some of them he didn't use any wash in. Um, something like this might have a little bit in the sky, but it was mostly just pen. This is the opposite. The method was a scratch board, a totally black surface, where he scraped the ink away to let the white of the paper show through. And what he was using was he, he took a sewing needle, stuck it in the end of a pencil eraser, and that became that very fine point that he used to get this extremely close detail, like the halo in the hair. My father took lots and lots of photographs. He was known to get up, um, you know, early in the morning and get rolls and rolls of sky photos um, up in Wilmington or on some of the bridges over what is now 93. And um, he would always be on the lookout and. From all those different photographs, he would decide what he was going to do. And once he got involved in one of the drawings, he just, it was like it became his world for that time. It became his baby. He would talk about it as his baby. All of his drawings have stories behind them. And when he uh, was part of a cooperative in Rockport, he would come home to my house and he would have sold two or three. And he never understood why he sold them. But he sold them because he told everybody the story and they couldn't leave without taking the print with them. <laughs> it was a wonderful way. And after 
he passed away, I would do some of the sitting in the gallery, or I'd just meet people even here and tell them the story. And I realized that all those stories are inside me as well. This is one of the first of Elmer's works that I had on the wall when I first opened, and it's, it's called New Harbor. And I probably had it on the wall three or four months here, and a customer was looking at it and made the comment, you know, he's got chickens in the chicken coop. I had to go over with a magnifying glass and look, and sure enough, he does have chickens in the chicken coop. So when Elmer came in for his coffee and all, I said, you know, Elmer, I've had that on the wall for at least three months. I didn't know you had chickens in the chicken coop. And again, that down main dry sense of humor. He says, yeah, he says, one of them's a rooster. There are certain ones that come from Monhegan. I mean, this is a Monhegan print um, or drawing, and this is a Monhegan. Ray Phillips told Elmer that this dory was his most valuable possession you know, and Elmer asked him why, he says, well, you'll, you'll see it in a lot of Andrew Wyeth's paintings, which is true. Well, when Ray Phillips passed away, a young couple bought his property and they chopped the boat up for firewood. The grist mill is from Wayside Inn. This is from Sturbridge Village, the boot shop, and down here, stump fence, our Sturbridge Village. The animal drawings, of these three are the only ones that he ever did. He, he would do his own, he put his own titles on his works. In this one, he named Veronica because of an actress named Veronica Lake, which most people don't remember, but her trademark was the hair over one side of her face, which is exactly what the dog has here. He did not do many animals or people. He has one in the book, um, which was his cousin's daughter, Kathy, in the sand. And he did that one, and the one with Ray and Donald, and that's about it for portraits. He went up to the farm stand up on Washington Street uh, you know, to pick out some ears of corn. The story is that while he was there, the people that run the place noticed this elderly gentleman acting funny. He kept picking things up, looking at them, and putting them down. And just before they got ready to call the police, they asked him, what are you doing? And he explained that, well, I am an artist, and I am looking for specific patterns in the corn. And that's why he was looking at each and every one of them. As far as my favorites of my father's, they do change. Um, from different times. His favorite was birches, and that's a very special one to all of us, because, especially because it was his favorite. I tend to go from one to another at different times. Uh, one of my favorites is the wave, which is a, a small scratch board, but I love it. I, I love the ocean, and I know he did too, but that's a, a favorite of mine. Um, one of the other favorites of mine is Mon he can hang up I just think the whole idea of the painting, and there is a, a copy of it at the museum on Monhegan. After my father did the drawings, he did limited number prints that were sold. And they, he started out with 100, but found very quickly that they sold pretty quickly. So he went to 250. But the originals have been kept in the family. My father's prints are available in Rockport at the Fine Arts Gallery in Rockport, but they're also available on elmarising.com, which we have just created and started because of Joe's closing.